Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now about a month ago, I got the X-Tool M1 diode laser and I've made a few things with it so far. One of the things I made was this sign. I used it to cut out that middle piece. I also used it to make some slate coasters. I made a dog tag for my sister-in-law's dog scooter. And today I'm gonna to use it to engrave on some metal business cards. Now I got this set of metal business cards off of Amazon. You get a ton of cards in this. Let me just show you some of the colors. There are some gorgeous colors in here. So there's gold, glossy black, pink, another gold, then a bright pink. Now here's the one I'm gonna to use today. Today I'm gonna to use this matte black card. I think it will be really, really nice. Now you have silver. You also have some bright blue, bright green, and red. So if you're interested in seeing how this project turns out, stick around. Now I have a football game to watch here in just a little bit. So we're going to jump on the computer. I'm going to show you how I take this design into the Creative Space software, set it up, and engrave it. Now on my computer, and I'm using a Mac, I have all of my software programs in an applications folder. Here's the Xtool Creative Space, so I'll just go ahead and double click on that. And there is a new download, but I'm going to hold off on that. And then I'll just make this smaller so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to Image click on it, and then I'm going to find my design. And it's right here, Business Card Draft Final. I'll go ahead and say Open, and that'll show up on my screen. Now notice it looks a little bit odd. It defaults to score. Score just means it's going to engrave a little line around the outside of everything. I'll change this to engrave, and then you'll see a little bit better what it will look like. Okay, so everything you see in purple is going to engrave. And on this black card, everything you see in purple will actually be silver when it's done. Now in a minute, I'll turn the M1 on and you'll see a picture of the bed of it right here. I have a piece of wood in there. It's a straight piece of wood that I have pushed against the front of it. And that's going to help me line up my card straight. Now I just thought about the fact that my card is black and the base of the M1 is black. So we'll see if I can make it work without putting something under it. Now with this selected, you see some things over here. I wanna click off of it. And when I click off of it, we'll get some other options. Okay, so I am gonna use just the flat bed of the laser. Here's my other options. If I was doing something round, it'd be laser cylindrical. Open plane means you're taking the bottom of it out and you're just lasering directly on something under it. And then these two are if you're using it with the blade. All right, let's find our material. It's the last thing I used. It's right up here, metal card. It went ahead and entered the thickness. And then I do not have any risers under or anything like that. So it is not raised. I'll click back on the card and it selected a power of 85 and a speed of 250 with one pass. To me, 200 lines per centimeter is a pretty good resolution. You can decrease it and you can increase it. But for this, I stayed with 200 last time. It did a great job. So I'll stick with it this time too. So at this time, I need to go ahead and turn this on so we see the camera. We see where our materials are, and we see if we can work with the black on black. All right, I think this will work out. What I could do is I could open it back up, put a piece of paper under this. Let me go ahead and do that. I think that'll make it a lot easier. Okay, that does make it a lot easier. Now, one thing that I've noticed is every time I bring something in, the size has changed. But as long as I keep these proportions locked, I can put this on my material or my blank and I can just resize it to what I need it to be. I don't want it to go all the way to the outside of the card. I want there to be a black edge around all of the engraving. Yeah. Now, if I didn't explain it clearly earlier, I have a piece of wood in here. It's shoved all the way to the front of the M1. There's a straight edge there. 
and then I can put my card against it to make sure it's straight. Now notice how it's hopping. What I can do is I can use the arrows of my keyboard and I can move it in smaller increments. See how it's moving there? The other thing is if I wanted to make sure it was perfect, I could have a template of this card and lay it down under my design to make sure I have it placed exactly right. For now, I'm just experimenting. I want to see how this turns out. I want to get really familiar with the machine and the software, so I'll go ahead and hit start. Let's see how long it says it's going to take this. Okay, it's estimating five minutes. I know that's kind of a long time, but I do have the five watt laser. I'd recommend if you're going to get one of these, definitely get that 10 watt laser. So I'll click start right here. And then when I'm ready, I can click the button on the front of the M1 and it'll start engraving. Now there is a filter that you can get for this. I don't have that, so I have mine in front of my window and I just vent it out the window. Okay, now here it is straight out of the M1. Look how gorgeous that is. I brought a paper towel and some alcohol over to clean it. I don't even need to do that. It turned out beautiful. I am in love with that. Now here's the first one I ever did. It's not centered well, but even that first engrave turned out great. Then I did this one. My letters were just a little bit too thick, I thought. They weren't super clear, and then I didn't have it centered very well. And then this is only the third one I've made. I love it. Now, the design might not be for you, but the quality of that engrave is amazing on these cards. Now, if you're interested in the cards, I'll have them linked in the video description below. If you're interested in an X tool, I'll have a link down there as well. If you use that, you can get a discount off of qualifying orders. Now, the one that I have is a 5 watt, but I would definitely recommend get the 10 watt. The 5 watt just isn't going to do everything that you might want to do. I've played around a little bit on powder coated tumblers. It will work on them, but your engrave ends up being black instead of bright silver like it should be. So go with that 10 watt, get that extra power. I think you'd be much happier with that than the 5 watt. So thanks so much for joining me. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. If you do, tap that bell and select the all notifications. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content.